Hello, I am Dr. Frederick Beavers and this is a Society of Vascular Surgery briefing about the topic of peripheral artery disease in African Americans. What would you do if a group of people were at high risk for developing a potentially lethal disease and you knew that the risk could be mitigated by using preventative measures? What would you do if these measures were implemented but the outcomes were disappointing? Such has been the plight of African Americans in peripheral artery disease or often called PAD. The diagnosis of PAD is a marker of coronary artery disease, stroke, and death, and the risk factors for PAD are well known. They include hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol levels, tobacco use, and heredity. Of these risk factors, there is a higher prevalence of hypertension and diabetes amongst African Americans. This has led to higher rates of PAD, coronary artery disease, and stroke. And once the diagnosis has been made, the long-term outcomes have been documented to be poor thus impacting the quality of life and lifespan of African Americans. Documentation of differences in the quality of care amongst the residents of the United States began with the Flexner Report. This report studied the medical educational system as it existed in the early part of the 20th century and noted the wide variance the education that doctors were receiving. Obviously this impacted the care that patients received, but it wasn't until the 1970s that the U.S. government began an ongoing effort to document the health status of its citizens. The program Healthy People was put in place to study the improvement in citizens' lives with respect to health outcomes. The initial report documented improvements in outcomes due to the effective treatment of infectious diseases, but subsequent reports reviewed health outcomes due to chronic illnesses. It wasn't until Healthy People 2000 that the term disparity was introduced. Even though prior research documented differences in outcomes based upon race, this was the first official document to state as an objective that the causes of racial disparities should be addressed. In 2003, another government-sponsored study published by the Institute of Medicine outlined the problems that have led to disparities in health care and attempted to propose solutions. Seven years later, the medical literature continues to report evidence that health disparities exist. Vascular surgeons are in a key position to influence health care disparity outcomes as it pertains to PAD. We see, evaluate, and treat PAD on a daily basis. The Society of Vascular Surgery has been in the process of developing and promoting practice guidelines for several vascular disease processes, a known and proven way to diminish inconsistencies in the delivery of health care. This endeavor, along with the ability of vascular surgeons to offer open and percutaneous options, will be imperative in treating patients with higher rates of co medical comorbidities, such as African Americans, and hopefully lead to the elimination of disparities. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.